and start waving some flags and making some noise for the electricians. Yeah. There's another site just about 200 yards up the road from here. It's the Crosswell Project. Langer Rawls and Costain are the main contractors. They're one of the biggest blacklisters of the whole system that's been going on for the last 10 years. How about we all march down in here? Even if the blacklisting now is illegal, it's still, you don't still on the file, it's still out there on the web. The firms know who you are, and, but we, we know Pete, I've, I've been lucky I managed to carry on contracting, self-employed. But we know people can't get any job at all, and it's blighted their whole career. It still has implications now because you go on the job, and even from 10, 12 years ago, the blacklist was originally compiled. You'll get a tap on the shoulder, and then suddenly they don't need you no more. And the implications the same for over the industry, really. All those in favour of marching down, raise your right hand and let's make some noise! Yeah. 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 McCluskey turned man and said any means necessary, including civil disobedience. But well, we've given civil disobedience. We've given civil disobedience. And on Sunday, he said industrial action and call it a general strike. But let's have a fucking general strike. Because at the moment they can't move. I'm picking you because I'm going to ask one person. I'll have you if you want. Olympics for blowing the whistle on the blacklist. It's the biggest building site in the world and blacklisting is still going on. Immediately after that I had six months out of work, got 150 applications on the internet, over 140 applications through JRB companies I hadn't received one job offer. Then I got a phone call from an employment agency, oh we've got a job for you, so where do you want to start? I oh, will start you at the Olympics. A week later I was dismissed. The company tried to frame me for stealing a tester, 800 pounds piece of equipment. Then about 10 minutes later, the foreman produced the tester. Uh, you haven't stolen it, I've, I've got it. So, so 10 minutes after that, he came up to my floor and said, right, you've got to leave site. I said, why is that? He said, you're leaving site because of uh, health and safety issues. I said, what health and safety issues? He couldn't produce any. I was escorted off the site by two foremen. On the main, to the main entrance, I walked into the convener's office. I said, you know what's going on with the blacklist? I said, you know, you know what's going on here? I said, they're doing me because of the blacklist again. I said, if you move me off this site, I'm going to have a demonstration down here Monday morning. My union will not tolerate it. The ballot support group will not tolerate it. He made a phone call to the project director. Within five minutes, the subcontractor's main contracts manager walked into the office, shook my hand and said, sorry about that, it shouldn't have happened. Construction unions can't allow these workers to be rotting on the side of building sites anymore. They've got to turn up and they start to make some noise for these blokes. Come on down, lads. Come on, 
Come, come on, then you come, then you come. We're asking you lads on the site, the Sparks, come down and have a word with us. Come December the 7th, you're buggered. So come on down. Radcliffe Power Station, they've all voted to walk out on Friday and hopefully the thing will spread. One out, all out! Speed, WHS, who are currently on here, currently one of the employers that are trying to break away from GIB, effectively de-skilling us. The cost of work is definitely going to cost us money. The deadline's getting closer, we've been told that if we haven't signed by December the 7th, we're sacked. So the lads are just getting sick of it. Our shops taken the stance that we're walking today, there was a Unite demonstration planned and we just decided, as a shop, our shop members decided to walk. The lads have decided that this is what we need to do and hopefully we can show the rest of the country that this is the only action that the employees understand. You can see, if you look around, chaos, civil disobedience, you can see the traffic, and this is what we want. We'll bring the job to a standstill, and we'll carry on going, and then we'll show solidarity, and we'll come to other jobs and do the same there. What's pleased us is a lot of people that are coming into work have sat down in the cars and listened to what we're saying, and there's an understanding that's taking place now uh, amongst the people that work on these sites that an attack on one agreement potentially could result in a attack on further agreements that they actually work on. There's lads come down from other jobs, we've got other trades who are out here supporting us now which is brilliant to see. The scaffolders are out with us in support as well, there's laggers out in support. And lads just realise that if they can do this to one trade, they can do it to all. When you see companies that, that, that are making millions of pounds, you know, and shareholders taking home, uh, you know, big profits from shares in, in these companies, and then you look at what the impact is on your standard of living, uh, I think that can that can go anywhere. I mean, we're seeing, you know, we're seeing disquiet in the public sector on the pensions issue. Uh, and we're now seeing it now in the construction sector over issues where national agreements are being ripped up uh, and, and they're thrown away. And the trade unions can't stand, there, stand by and let that happen to their members. Just been to speak to one of them there, just to let him know what's going on, give him a leaflet. And he had a read of it and he said, look, I'm, I've got to drop this lord off because of the nature of it, but I'm not fetching my second lord in here, he said. I'm a United member and I'm just not crossing it. No, I'm really happy with that one. The companies that are attempting to pull out of the GRB national agreement on the electrical contracting side, the majority of those companies have been named as blackers of trade union stewards and activists. You've been encouraged by uh, companies who sign on to national agreements where they want shop stewards. And then because they think that you're a competent person who really has got the interests of the workforce at heart, they're prepared to destroy your working life after you, you leave air site. I managed to get one of the companies there, Balfour BT Engineering Services, to a tribunal in Manchester in February with the help of the Unite Legal Department and I won my case. I was unemployed for months and really the, the compensation I received really just put the money back in the bank that I had to pay to keep myself afloat. <laughs> Luckily at the moment I'm in employment but I might be in a situation where because I won my tribunal and probably because I'm saying this, I might be picked up again. People don't realise that this government, this uh, coalition, are attempting to make even employment tribunal legislation harder. We need to stand together and what I will say to the lads who aren't on board now, the uh, blacklist electricians who are actually fighting for this and when they win it, they still won't be able to work, there'll still be no jobs for them. So we need to stick together in solidarity and fight their case as well. On Monday night, John McDonnell and myself and Calvin Hopkins tabled the following motion to Parliament. This House expresses its concern at the actions of a cartel of construction companies that are seeking to tear up the existing national pay agreement for skilled electricians, threatening hundreds of skilled workers with redundancy if they do not sign a new contract reducing their hourly wage rate by a third express its support for the pickets and demonstrations organised by Unite and UCAT members at construction sites across the country. I can tell you that it is working. We're starting to get access 
finally to these sites. Gratz have provided dates for us. Balfour Beatty have provided a date for us on the 24th of October to address everyone over at Blackfriars Bridge. Our fight is the same fight. Um, we are currently going through a contract dispute and well, 43 workers have been laid off for two and a half months. All over the world right now, corporate capital is doing the same thing. They're doing the same thing in UK, the same thing in the United States, coming to workers and saying, you have to take the cuts. You have to take the cuts. Profits are up. Profits are up all over the world. Union busted. It's disgusting. Union busted. It's disgusting. Union busted. It's disgusting. Thank you, guys. Next week, won't we, lads? <laughs> Just shows the strength of feeling and, and exactly who we are targeting. 1,600 electricians have had HR1 forms in Balfour BT threatening them with a sack. Today, a million young people, it's official, will be unemployed in this country. Those are the people who should be having apprentices. Those are the people who should be having the future. Colleagues want to see twice as many next week. And let's just ramp it up now. We know what we need to do. You know what needs to be done. In around about a week or so's time, the officers will be on that site and we'll be telling people, educating people, of what needs to be done to defend this outrageous attacks on our national agreements. Thanks very much, colleagues. We'll see you next week. Here we go. All right, my thanks, everybody, for coming.